Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about Mazda's very cool 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. It won a Wards Auto 10 Best Engine Award in 2017 in the CX-9 and it is also used in the Mazda 6. Now if you haven't yet checked out my video talking about why downsized turbocharged engines aren't always efficient in the real world, I would highly recommend checking that out first, as in this video we're going to be talking about how Mazda has kind of overcome some of the negative consequences that may be associated with using a downsized turbocharged engine. And so how are they able to make it both powerful and efficient is what we're going to be talking about in this video, and it's going to come down to two ideas here, the first being exhaust scavenging and the second being cooled EGR, or exhaust gas recirculation. So first off, talking about exhaust scavenging. So here we have a traditional four-cylinder turbocharged engine, and you can see we've got cylinders one, two, three, and four. Our firing order is one, three, four, two, and you've got your exhaust manifold here, then dumping into the turbocharger. You want a short exhaust manifold because you want to maintain all of that pressure and get it into the turbo as quickly as possible uh, so that you can use as much energy to keep that turbo spooled up, have good response. But the negative consequence of using this 4 to 1 exhaust style is that the pressures are going to overlap and as they overlap they trap some of the exhaust gases in the previous cylinder. So for example, after cylinder 2 fires, we look at our firing order here, 2, after cylinder 2 fires, 1 is going to fire. So 2 is finishing up its firing uh, cycle while 1 is then beginning to start its firing cycle, then finishing it, its exhaust valve opens. 2's exhaust valve is about to close, but not yet closed, so 1 is open, that exhaust gas comes out, pressurizes this exhaust manifold, and some of that pressure forces the air that's still trapped within cylinder 2 to remain in there. It doesn't allow for all of the gases to escape. So you trap some of those hot exhaust gases in that cylinder. And as a result, you know, you're going to increase your likelihood for knock because you're trapping hot gases in that cylinder. You're heating up the cylinder, which you don't want to do. If anything, you want cooled EGR if you're going to have EGR going in there. And so the strategy that Mazda takes here uh, is to have a 431 exhaust. And so you'll notice that these exhaust gases, as they're coming out, they don't always line up next to each other. So cylinder 4 fires and then cylinder 2 fires. And you can see these aren't right next to each other. So what Mazda does in order to change that to make sure that the cylinders are always right next to each other is this 431 design. So cylinders 3 and 2 are paired together and so they all come out in a straight path next to each other. So your firing order 1, 3, 4, 2, you'll see 1, 3, 4, 2. Two, one, three, four, two. So you're always going, you're just going back and forth across and you're always firing right next to another cylinder and they're both coming out in this vertical direction uh, with each other. So with our same example here with two and one, uh, so cylinder two is finishing up its stroke and then cylinder one is just opening up that exhaust. So cylinder one opens up the exhaust, the exhaust comes out and it helps to pull the remaining gases from cylinder two, this is called the ejector effect, because they're side by side and facing this vertical direction, as it comes out, it starts pulling air from that cylinder next to it, and then exhaust, and that just pa passes down the line here. So it goes, you know, one, three, four, two, and they're continuously next to each other. The cylinder that fired last is next to the cylinder that's currently opening its exhaust stroke. And so as a result, you have this ejector effect continuously helping to scavenge, pull out as much of that exhaust gas as possible so that you can have the next cylinder fill up with full, fresh, cool uh, air and fuel. Unlike here, where it doesn't overlap, so you've got cylinder four firing, that's going to then pressurize cylinder two, uh, you know, so you've got it where it's not always overlapping correctly uh, versus here, it's set up in a way that allows you to have that scavenging effect. Now I have a separate video going to, into this in more detail and how it also allows for you to not have much turbo lag. So if you'd like to check that out and you'd like to see more detail on this exhaust manifold design, I'll also include a link to that in the video description. So the first thing Mazda is doing to have both power and efficiency is this scavenging. The second thing they're doing is cooled EGR. And so how does this work? Well, if we look at our cylinder here, so here we have that exhaust. Uh, we're just kind of flipping this around so you can see the exhaust coming out going into our turbocharger you've got the intake uh, so you have your turbocharger intake here it's going to send air uh, through this in blue this ex this intake manifold into the cylinders 
but you also have this EGR route. And so after those exhaust pass out of that 431 design, you're gonna have you're gonna tap into that and you're going to have an exhaust gas recirculation route. And so you can open this port in order to allow some of that exhaust gas to go through then an EGR cooler. And then from the EGR cooler, that's an air to water cooler. You'll see that mounted on top of the engine. This is going to be cooled with a liquid before then passing into the intake manifold. So you're going to add some air into the intake manifold that's been cooled from this EGR cooler, but it's an inert gas. There's not oxygen in it, and so it's not able to combust. So you're putting in this cool inert gas in addition to the air that's being passed in uh, with the engine, the fresh air that's coming in. And so you've got less oxygen overall. That means you're going to have lower combustion temperatures because you're not gonna be burning as much fuel. But the EGR that you do add is cooled. So you're not adding this hot gas or trapping this hot gas uh, like a traditional engine may do. Now, because you're adding that cooled EGR, that inert gas, you can actually use more boost, and then you can use boost to compensate uh, for that inert gas, and you can create more power depending on how much you want. You just simply add more boost, uh, but you don't have to worry about knock because you're using that cooled EGR in order to regulate the combustion temperatures, keep the combustion temperatures low, and that way you don't have to worry about knock, and you can still use higher air fuel ratios. So that's the real kicker here, how this is able to be efficient and powerful is using these higher air fuel ratios. So how does this engine have both power and efficiency at the same time? Well, if we look at a graph of torque versus RPM, and so here up at the top, we have the peak torque that is possible for this turbocharged engine. And as we talked about in the previous video about downsized turbochargers, there's a relatively low load, a low amount of torque, a low amount of throttle that you can give it and still have an ideal air fuel ratio, an air fuel ratio of about 14.7 to one. So above that, in order to make more torque, you have to actually decrease the air fuel ratio. So use more fuel, inject more fuel in order to bring combustion temperatures down and therefore avoid knock. But Mazda, on the other hand, what they do instead is use this cooled EGR. And by using that cool EGR, they can increase uh, the peak torque you can create while still running a 14.7 to one air fuel ratio. So you're using a much less rich air fuel ratio than other engines would be in these high torque, high boost scenarios uh, without, you know, you're, you're not sacrificing fuel economy as much because you're not using as much fuel. So you're able to create the power very efficiently using this cooled EGR. So that's the really neat thing about this engine, uses cooled EGR in order to increase the level at which you can still run a stoichiometric air fuel ratio and produce a lot of torque. All right, well, if this is such a great idea, why doesn't everyone do it? And so what Mazda says is that by running this cooled EGR, their EPA fuel economy numbers are not any better. So the fuel economy cycle that this car runs on keeps it low enough, keeps most cars low enough that they don't actually get into these higher load scenarios. And so you don't see on the EPA ratings, you don't see the benefits of doing this. And so what Mazda is doing is they're designing this, they're putting money, they're investing in the customer getting a real world good fuel economy that they don't necessarily see on the sticker, or it's more accurately represented on the sticker. So it's an interesting idea because from a selling point, they don't get to say they have any better fuel economy than you know what they would have without using this cooled EGR. And yet in the real world, you're gonna notice it, you're gonna notice you're getting better fuel economy even in situations where you're demanding power, demanding peak torque from this engine. So the engine producing 227 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, all on 87 octane gas. So very cool that they're able to achieve very high uh, torque numbers, very high efficiency numbers, all in the real world, and all using 87 octane gas, regular pump gas, uh, because they're involving this cooled EGR system. So you don't have to pay more for your fuel and you still get the benefits of a turbocharged engine and it's actually efficient. So a very cool design uh, from Mazda, very clever what they've been able to do with this. If you guys have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below. Thanks for watching.